Ah, welcome time travelers and welcome new time travelers. As always, if you're new to this channel and enjoy learning about history, one event at a time, then don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today we're going to start out in 1792 when French Army officer Claude Claudine Joseph Bogart de Leslie composed La Marseille's The French National Anthem. 1800 brought us the Liberty of Congress that was officially founded as the U.S. President John Adams approved the $5,000 appropriated to acquire such books as may be necessary for the use of Congress. Um, it eventually became the largest library in the world. Now, I don't know if that's like in National Treasure where they uh, go and find the President's secret book in the Library of Congress. I don't know if that's actually true or not. But you know how, how um, Hollywood fabricates things. So, 77 years later, in 1877, war broke out between Russia and the Ottoman Empire. At the conclusion of the Serbio-Turkish War, resulting in the independence for Serbia and Montenegro, our next stop will be in 1898 when Spain declared war on the United States. 1904 is when painter William D. Kong Kuhn, I think it's Kuhn, one of the leading exponents of abstract expressionism, was born in Rotterdam, um, Netherlands. The following year, in 1905, American novelist, poet, and critic Robert Penn Warren who was uh, best known for his treatment of the moral dilemmas in a southern basis by the erosion of its traditional world values was born. We're going to make a stop in 1916 when members of the Irish Volunteers and the Irish Citizen Army seized strategic points in Dublin during the Easter Rising which heralded the end of the British power in Ireland. On this day in 1944, a new drive into Anawa Prov uh, Providence, China, was launched by Japanese. The Japanese. Uh, 1949 brought us communist forces occupying the Chinese capital, Nanking, Nanjing. After crossing the Yakunzi River, uh, virtually unopposed by um, adherence to the national nationalist government under President Chiang Kang Sheng, 1967 is when Soviet Communist Vladimir Kamerov became the first man to die during a space mission when his spacecraft became entangled in its parachute during an attempted landing. Um, in 1979, an estimated 50,000 to 80,000 Cambodian civilian refugees and soldiers were reported to have crossed the border into Thailand between April 21st and April 24th to escape Vietnamese-led assault. These officials who had ordered the forceful repertorsion of some 6,000 Cambodians on April 19th reported April 29th that most of the newly arrived Cambodians had already left Thailand in accordance with government policy that denied permanent sanctuary 
to the neighboring Cambodians. Officials who denied it that the granting of temporary asylum compromised Thai nationality, naturality, said there was no effective way to prevent the influx and noted that Cambodians were not allowed to use their weapons while in Thailand. In 1980, U.S. forces launched a mission to rescue American hostages in Iran, but the attempt failed and eight U.S. service members were killed. Now on to better news. On this day in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope launched into orbit from Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida. Aboard the space shuttle Discovery, and it flies around the Earth at an altitude of 335 miles. Now, on this day in 2003, officials of North Korea informed U.S. diplomats that it had nuclear weapons and was making bomb-grade plutonium. The following year, in 2004, American businesswoman S.D. S.D. Ladeer who co-founded the hugely profitable fragrance and beauty company that bore her name, passed away in Manhattan. Now, and finally, in 2005, Pope Benedict XVI, formerly known as Joseph Ratzinger, successful to John Paul II, formally assumed his position as new leader as the new leader of the Roman Catholic Church during a Mass in St. Peter's Square in Vatican City. And with this, we return to 2024 and our current history. Until next time.